In this example, we'll solve negative the quantity n plus 8 plus n equals negative 8n plus 2 times the quantity 4n minus 4. We're solving this for n, and as before, we're trying to classify the equation as well at the end. So as we've done already a couple of times, we clear the parentheses first. So the negative 1 or the negative has to get distributed into the n and the n plus 8 which would give us negative n minus 8. The plus n just comes along for the ride, the negative 8n comes along for the ride, and this 2 has to get distributed into both the 4n and the negative 4. So 2 times 4n gives us 8n, and then 2 times negative 4 gives us negative 8. There are no fractions, so we can skip ahead to step 3. And step 3 says get all the variables on one side of the equation, and all the non-variables onto the other side. So we want to move all the ends. In this particular case, I move them to the left. So I have a negative 8n here. When I move it to the left, it becomes a positive 8n. When I have a positive 8n being moved, when it moves over to the left, it becomes a negative 8n. Remember again, we're using inverse operations. So the negative n stays, the positive n stays, the positive 8n and the negative 8n are coming from the right-hand side. And then this negative 8 on the right-hand side stays as it is, but we're going to take this negative 8 and move it to the right side. Because it's subtraction on the left, when we move it over, it becomes addition. So that's why that negative 8 turns into a positive on the right-hand side. At this stage, we can combine like terms, but hopefully you see something cool happening here. Negative n plus n is 0. Not n, it's just 0. If you subtract something from itself, you always get 0 as the answer. Similarly, 8n minus 8n will be 0 again. So 0 plus the 0 would just give us 0 as the answer. And then a third time, negative 8 plus 8, well, if you subtract something from itself, 8 minus 8 is just 0. So that's also going to give us a 0 on the right-hand side. Now hopefully you remember that there's three outcomes that we could get when we're solving a linear equation. A variable equals a number, or a number equals a number that's either true or false. Now zero equals zero, there's no variables left over. There's no n's left over to deal with. So if there's no variables left over, we look to see if it's a true statement or a false statement. Zero does indeed equal zero, so this is hopefully obviously a true statement. And when we have no variables left over and we have a true statement, we say that the equation is an identity. And just like the previous example, there's no potential solutions to check. We don't have any values of n that popped out as potential solutions that we need to even bother checking in the original equation. So that's it. This is just an identity. Any value of n will make this equation true. It has infinitely many solutions.